and I'm professor of marketing, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of marketing and interactive business department. And the next speaker I'm going to introduce, I'm very proud to introduce uh, Michael Venuti, president of Agua Brands, the maker of Agua Active Hydration and Agua Fruit Essence. Michael Venuti has more than two decades of experience in consumer products and finance. With colleague and Agua Brands co-founder, Dr. Carol Dollard, Mr. Venuti is leveraging his expertise and hard-earned contacts to grow Agua Brands from the ground up. Mr. Venuti and Dr. Dollard launched Agua Brands, formerly Agua Enerviva, in 2012, drawing on their experience with enhanced waters to introduce a new beverage category with the health-minded consumer. Prior to that, uh, uh, Michael was with uh, uh, Vitamin Water. In his role as Chief Financial Officer of uh, Galactu, from 2002 to 2009, Ms. Sevenuti helped the Vitamin Water and Smart Water brands to expand to create the fastest growing company in the history of beverage industry. Under his leadership, the company developed into a one billion brand and was ultimately purchased by Coca-Cola for $4.1 billion. At Galecu, Ms. Sevenuti oversaw all financial functions, including accounting, finance, investor relations, equity offerings, and raising capital. He also oversaw major contact contracts, including marketing initiatives, distribution contracts, and celebrity endorsement deals. Additionally, Mr. Venuti was a board member for Vitamin Water and part of the team that negotiated the sale to Coca-Cola. In 2006, Mr. Venuti led and negotiated a $700 million equity financing with the Tata Group, which valued LQ at $2.1 it's my honor and great pleasure to introduce Mr. Venuti. Thank you, Dr. Mather. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, to show you how dedicated I am. It's, it's not only Zorb's 50th anniversary, it's also my 25th wedding anniversary tonight. <laughs> my wife, Elizabeth Venuti. So, uh, it's, uh, it's very important to be able to come back and share experiences um, of, of what I've learned in, in terms of education and what it has helped me to achieve and what I can maybe suggest in terms of the future. I mean, when they first asked me, what do you think about education in the next 50 years? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't been in school for, for about 25 years in a class. So I don't know how education has, has progressed. So I, I kind of wanted to take a step back and, and kind of compare where it was and where it's going, and then link that also to kind of the business environment, the way, where it is today. Uh, I mean, years ago, basically everybody finished high school and you went to college. Uh, it was a physical classroom. Uh, the amount of industries was limited, maybe manufacturing, construction, different types of industries not as diverse as it is now. Uh, you had to basically write everything down. Everything was manual. There was nothing computerized. Um, and, and your resources was an uh, encyclopedia, basically, or the library. That's what, what was then. Today, it's totally changed. Uh, I know my two daughters, one's graduated college, one currently uh, in college, and seen what the practices have been now. And it's very, very interesting to see how everything has evolved in terms of the student base. I mean, now people work, you know, full time and they go to college. Uh, online is, is an important part of the education process. People no longer have to be physically in the university. They can take courses online, uh, which it makes it more flexible for people to be able to get that education. Uh, everything now is smartphones. Before it was how fast you can write something down, now it's how fast you can type something in a classroom. Very, very different. And, and, and the types of resources that are available today in terms of electronics and you know, Wikipedia, um, 
online, the internet, all the kind of resources you have is immeasurable. So you're kind of starting at a new base. And how is the business evolving to be able to you know, utilize that base? So changes have also happened in the business world in terms of all the curriculums that are out there uh, from a marketing perspective and being in the beverage industry. Before, it was all about just showing your product, just getting it out there. Now, it's all about getting them to experience your product. What does it taste like? That's what's going to set you aside. Uh, in terms of you know, finance, finance, it was all about accounting, checks and balances. That was it, basically summarizing everything. Now it's about predicting the future. You now we've, we've heard you know, from the panel about the economies and what the industries and the trends are. How do we figure that out? How, how are you going to be able to train your students to be able to take advantage of that and then add value? Um, I think you know, a lot of us as, as owners and of the business, we're looking for talent. What sets that talent apart is basically what I'm looking for. It's like, I know you're going to have the fundamentals. I know you're going to have the business education, they're going to teach you everything that you need to know, but what's going to set you aside that is going to stand out? So I think that also has changed. IT, I mean, IT, we could talk about technology. It changes, I mean, not only every year, every 10, month, 10 months, five months, two months, whatever. It, it, it's, it's unbelievable in terms of the technology. Before, as one person in a room, with uh, cables, and that was it. Now, it's all about departments that you need to have as part of the lifeline of companies. It's, it's crucial. I think technology and having the curriculum to keep up with the technology is what is gonna set, for me, any, any organization or any university apart from everybody else. I mean, it's a dual thing. You know, in terms of how I would look at it, I mean, the students are the customers. They're basically coming for an education. The university needs to basically sell, well, what sets us apart? What's going to make your life different? How are you going to be exceed in life from another university? What makes us different? And I think that's how I kind of looked at in, ter in terms of merging education with the business world and how it's all evolving and how all changing. And I, I, We've heard some of it today about experience. Experience-based learning, I think, is crucial for the future of business education. I think, I think um, Dr. Berlin mentioned, or, or, or uh, President Rabinowitz, about the, uh, the programs with Capital One and the Entrepreneurship Leadership Program. I, don't, I think those are invaluable. I think those are important for the future of the business education. Having practical experience as part of your curriculum is, is immeasurable. Because this way, you're figuring out whether you like what you're doing while you're doing it. You're not getting an education, graduating, and then going into the real world and deciding, well, you know what? I think I made a mistake because I really didn't experience it. To me, uh, what I would you know, advocate with the university, and I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that these programs, and I know I've been involved with uh, Dr. Berlin in terms of what we've been doing with the uh, advisory board, implementing these programs and actually funding them and getting companies behind it to basically fund it as well. Because basically it's a training round for them. They're getting good people and making sure that people are well equipped and trained to be, be able to go into the business world. So to me, uh, experience-based learning is, is, is crucial. Um, I think the other, the other area, uh, and we've talked about it, is social media and how do you utilize social media technology in the business world. I mean, I, you know, when I was at Vitamin Water, there was no social media. Basically, it was all print advertising, you know, television advertising, word of mouth, you know, how did you get your product out there, sample, all of that. Now, it's a totally different world in terms of all the social media that's available, Facebook, uh, Instagram, I don't even know how to use half of this stuff, but anyway, it's, it's sort of like you need to have a group of people within your organization that is responsible for that and being able to set you apart from other organizations. 
technology within companies now is unbelievably important in terms of leading the organizations and getting them to the next level. If you fall behind in technology, you're going to fall behind in moving forward. So, you know, as I, you know, with you know, my words of wisdom are basically to, to find out what you really want to do and experience it through education that will set you apart going forward. As a business owner, I want people who understand what the business world is really like and what they want to do. And I want them wanting to work for my organization because they understand it. Not learning on the job because at the end of the day, it winds up being you know, not a practical thing. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention, and in terms of shifting and adaptability, being able to shift as trends shift. Um, being in the beverage industry, it was very, very interesting coming in at a time with vitamin water. It was unique in that we were the pretty much the only kind of water in that segment. It was new, nobody knew what it was, so there wasn't a, a lot of competition. And in, in the five years that we grew the company, we went from 35 million to a billion dollars in revenue in five years. Now, you can imagine the monumental task of being able to manage that growth with an organization that grew from 50 people to 500 people during that time was, was unbelievable. But what I think helped me in terms of being CFO, the custodian of the company, was being able to make decisions that were not just fact-based, but also being able to think about outside of the box and what, the, what was best for the company. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, one of the marketing uh, tools that we used was to get celebrity endorsers. Uh, we had a whole host of them, and that was one of the fun part of my jobs is that I get to negotiate the contract and then, you know, meet the people and all that. So one of the uh, endorsers that we, we looked at was 50 Cent. I'm sure you guys are familiar with him. Um, and at that time, he was just getting hot. You know, he was, he was really rolling. And, you know, part of thing that we liked about him is that he actually did a commercial, a sneaker commercial, and within that sneaker commercial, he actually had a bottle of vitamin water. So he was actually advertising because he liked to drink it, so that he made that part of the commercial. We had nothing to do with it. So we basically said, that's the guy for us to endorse the company. So what we did is we, we went out and you know talked to him and pursued him. Now, being the finance guy, being the guy who's got to worry about everything, you know, 50s reputation at that time. You know, he was an ex-convict. He wasn't, you know, with you know people that were desirable with the organization. I'm like, you know, we got to be careful what we're doing. But that's a type of decision to being adapt, flexible and adaptable to what change is and thinking about the future and making a decision not based on the past and what could happen, but going for it and saying, you know what, we're going to take the risk and do it. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of adaptability is, you know, with my, my new company, Agua Brands, I mean, the company started in 2012. Uh, my partner, Carol Dollard, she's a, a scientist. She's the one who was the, the brains behind all of the product development, the vitamin water, you know, she created this. She always wanted an energy drink. And basically, my example is how the product started in 2012. And through learnings and what we thought we were going to do at that time, we were able to take information over four years to be able to come up with this new bottle, which is a proprietary different bottle that's not in the industry. We call it Agua Brands Energy Drink. So, you know, although it's part of it is free advertising for my company, but it's, it's, also, it's also about showing how you have to be flexible and adaptable in the business world. And I think Developing curriculums for students are critical that instill those types of values, that you're able to change within a curriculum, not just the fundamentals of the curriculum, going outside the box, you know, whether it be marketing, not just the traditional marketing, getting involved in you know, graphics, arts, and, and whatnot. It's all about being flexible and, and basically uh, providing more than what the norm is. 
And I think it's going to be critical in, in business that, you know, who knows, five years from now, 10 years from now, to have those expertise and have those students be able to develop that way. So basically, to summarize, um, the way I would, I would think, you know, action today for su success tomorrow is that develop the programs that, that include work experience as part of the curriculum. I really believe that is the future, whether it be entrepreneurship, why not? Don't limit it to one particular area of expertise. Make it a broad-based function. And in fact, I don't think it's limited to the business school. I think it's something that should be applied across the board to university. Um, and I think diversifying the curriculums, cross-functional diversification is important as well. Um, and I didn't touch about international uh, because I think that's a key, key component of the business model in the future. Um, it's, it's a separate type of, of, of uh, expertise that you're going to be looking to develop. But I think international and global business is, is, is where it's going to be for the future of any, any university. And I think tapping into those experiences are going to be very, very important to add that as part of the curriculum. So, and, and basically, you know, my closing note is the university should invest in itself to provide the best product to their customers as students. But you as students need to invest in yourself to put the demands of diversifying whatever you want to do, learning as much as you can in any particular industry or business curriculum, getting that information so you understand when you go into the business world, you know what you want to do. And that that is going to be basically the, you know, the way I, I believe you'll be successful. So once again, I want to thank you for having me here. And, uh, I appreciate it. Let's have a round of applause for all our panelists. Four absolutely terrific Hofstra success stories. Uh, we expect that 25 years from now, when we celebrate the 75th anniversary, mm -hmm. a number of the students who are in the audience tonight will be the panelists 25 years from now. <laughs> and now, please join us for cake as the celebration continues in CB Star Hall. And of course, the cake is chocolate. Thank you very much.